everyone, and welcome to this NGWA Industry Connected video, which is brought to you by Franklin Electric, an industry partner of the National Groundwater Association and diamond sponsor of Groundwater Week 2021. Today we're with longtime NGWA member Art Becker, CPG, MGWC, NGWAF, the recipient of NGWA's most prestigious award, the Ross L. Oliver Award for outstanding contributions to the groundwater industry. Becker is president of Drilling and Safety Consultants, LLC, in Barnegat, New Jersey, and will receive the 2021 Ross L. Oliver Award during Groundwater Week 2021, December 14th through the 16th in Nashville, Tennessee. Welcome, Art. Thanks for your time today. Well, thanks, Mike. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, appreciate it. So let's begin with uh, congratulations on winning this Ross L. Oliver Award. What's, uh, what's this award mean to you? Well, first of all, I was very, very surprised. I know there's a lot of people that uh, that are certainly worthy of having this uh, this award besides myself. But what it really means to me is, I'm uh, first of all, I'm honored and, and humbled to receive the Oliver Award. And you know, this award just isn't about me. It's about a lifetime of being in a great industry, and uh, you know, having uh, had so many industry members assist me uh, throughout my career in the groundwater industry. And, uh, you know, all these folks really own a piece of this award, not just me. That's great. And looking back on those people who have helped you win this award, uh, can you share a little bit about who's been instrumental? Well, uh, the first one I have to say is my lovely wife, Joanne. Uh, you know, Joanne supported me through... Uh, through all my business efforts and and frankly always allowed business to come first and sometimes at the detriment of uh, you know family vacations and things like that uh, which I'm sure all of our members who uh, own family owned businesses understand and and have had those situations themselves um, but she was with me every step of the way in my volunteer participation uh, with the NGWA and other industry activities and I certainly owe uh, a big thank you to uh, John, uh, former president John Pitts, as uh, he was the one that uh, that actually sent in my nomination without my knowledge, <laughs> I might add. <laughs> so, um, and a whole, just a whole host of other people in the industry that have been, uh, uh, you know, just wonderful to me and 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 taught me a lot. Yeah, and speaking of your involvement with NGWA, as president of NGWA in 2011. What do you think was the most meaningful achievement during your one year term? I absolutely the most meaningful achievement for me was addressing the need to recognize leadership from all the NGWA division members and allowing them to serve as president of the NGWA. Uh, the board of directors now elects uh, officers uh, of the NGWA from the members of the board and allow any member uh, of the board to be nominated and serve as an officer. Uh, you know, this concept required a change in the NGWA code of regulations, and I was very pleased to have the NGW membership support the change and vote in favor of it. Uh, I personally feel this was a big change from uh, past officer appointment practice and, and a very important change for the future of the NGWA. I, I think we really have to uh, realize that quality leadership is the key to our future with the NGWA, and that that leadership can come from every division within our organization, not just the contractors. Sure. And you entered the industry, the waterway industry, in 1972 after earning a degree in geology. What are some of the career achievements you're most proud of looking back? Well, two I can think of right off the top is uh, when I got my uh, my CWD with the you know certification with the NGWA, and then uh, as I became president just a year prior, uh, I had made a decision that if I was going to represent the organization, I needed to obtain the highest certification, and I was successful in getting my uh, master groundwater contractor's uh, certification. And uh, that that was a great moment for me. It's a difficult test, um, and I, I think it's uh, anybody that achieves that. It, it, it's a great statement, uh, you know, for our industry. 
Um, the other thing is, uh, you know, I started my own business in 1985, and I was very fortunate. It was it it, it was very a very successful business, and uh, you know, I guess after spending 13 years learning the drilling business by working for other industry members, uh, I finally just decided to break out on my own and, and and start my own business. And like I said, it 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 worked out, and I was very very fortunate. Uh, in addition to all this, you know, serving as uh, the chairman of the New Jersey Well Drillers Advisory Board um, for the past 13 years has, has really been uh, important to me. Uh, I like to be involved in the regulatory aspects and I like to be involved in, you know, serving the industry uh, in a state, you know, state business as well. Okay, another achievement I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased with is the fact that I've been chairman of the Well Drillers uh, pump and pump and stores examining an advisory board for the state of New Jersey uh, for the past 13 years. Uh, I, I really enjoy, you know, serving our industry, not only on a national level with the NGWA, but also, uh, you know, assisting on a state level. And, and I enjoy getting involved in the regulatory process with the state government. It's been very rewarding. And you're now president of a safety consulting firm can you share what that all entails? Sure. Uh, Drilling and Safety is a small company. It's me. <laughs> we don't have any other employees. And uh, basically what happened is when I retired from uh, SGS, they asked me if I would consider consulting for them, um, you know, on matters of business and helping them with uh, projects and whatnot. So I do uh, a little bit of work for them. It's kind of like I, I get to pick and choose and I occasionally work for other uh, people helping them with safety issues, business administration issues. Um, so it's 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 kind of rewarding for me to still dabble in the industry, but also at the same time to be able to enjoy my retirement and kind of pick and choose, uh, you know, what I do. So it's it, it's nice to be in this position. Sure. And with safety being a top priority in our industry, what improvements would you like to see in the future? Well, I, I think it's really important that we continue to place big emphasis on uh, automation and drilling equipment uh, with safety of the crew being paramount. Uh, you know, removing employees out of the line of fire is critical. Uh, you know, an example I can give is, you know, when I started, you know, way back when, so to speak, in the industry, uh, when we went to drive split spoons with a hammer, we would use a cat head. And many, many, many drillers were seriously injured using cat head. It was just a, 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 a difficult device to master. And at any one moment, something could change and the rope could get caught up and, you know, uh, you could get pulled into the cat head and, and seriously injured. So then what happened was somebody came along and, and, and made what they call an automatic hammer. And now, you know, auto hammers are used exclusively in the industry. I haven't seen a cat head in years. And that's just an example of uh, automation that came into play and uh, and did a great job uh, protecting uh, employees and, and workers in our industry. Um, another thing I can think of right now that manufacturers are concentrating on, not all of them have this ability, but many of them do, and that's drill rod handling and, and joint makeup. Mm -hmm. uh, many drill rigs now have that uh, process automated. So I think we need to concentrate uh, on and continue with automation of equipment and material handling in our industry to protect our workers. And you've co-taught the short course Drilling Fundamentals for Hydrogeologists and Engineers multiple times over the years at Groundwater Week with Marvin Glotfelty. How vital is it to have everyone, hydrogeologists and engineers, and the water well contractors be on the same page on a project? And is that part of this short course's goal? Uh, yes, it's very, very critical that uh, that all of the personnel on a groundwater site understand what each individual's job is and what their responsibilities are and what they're all trying to accomplish collectively as a team, you know, ultimately for the goal of, uh, let's say, drilling a well. Um, and yes, uh, you know, drilling fundamentals really does stress that we need to have this synergy uh, between, uh, you know, our different uh, uh, workers uh, on a groundwater uh, project. 
Um, I think it's really important, and this is what we're teaching in this course, is that engineers have a rudimentary understanding of the different drilling methods and understand how things can change in the field and how, therefore, a driller may have to adapt and do something a little different in order to deal with a certain situation, let's say a different uh, geologic uh, situation. And I, I think it's critical that, um, you know, the engineers recognize that, you know, we don't always have that layer cake geology situation on every single, uh, you know, well. Um, and therefore you have to be able to adapt in the field. And I think it's important that they recognize that, uh, you know, well drillers are groundwater professionals. They know what they're doing. You know, uh, many, many states require individual licenses like the state of New Jersey. So that individual is licensed by the state, takes a difficult test uh, and has to pass it in order to be able to drill wells. So with their experience and I think that they're licensed, I think the engineer has to, you know, to recognize that they are professionals and allow them some, uh, you know, some degree of, of latitude to make decisions in a field on what is best at that moment for what they're dealing with in the borehole. Makes sense. And lastly, what are you most looking forward to at Groundwater Week 2021? Well, first of all, having a Groundwater Week where we're actually in person, <laughs> which has been a challenge, as you all know, the, the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I would say, you know, the first and foremost thing is, you know, getting to spend some time with, uh, with the great friends and, and colleagues that I have in the industry, uh, getting to see them personally. Um, you know, after that, it's attending the educational programs and visiting the exhibition hall and seeing all the new equipment and, uh, you know, reacquainting myself, uh, you know, with industry members and networking with them, you know, while I'm at Groundwater Week. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So are we. And thanks again for your time today, Art. And we look forward to seeing you at Groundwater Week 2021, December 14th through the 16th in Nashville, Tennessee. Well, thanks, Mike. And I, I want to thank, you know, the NGWA and I want to thank the nominating committee, um, you know, for considering me for this award. And it's uh, it's greatly appreciated. And I just want to thank everyone. Thank you very much.